It's time for Off the Press, and we have our guest, Opunaba Unkotaria, is a political affairs analyst, and he's joining us from River State. Good morning to you, Opunabo. Good morning, and good morning, Nigerians. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, we'll just go on and take the headlines, and then uh, we we'll talk briefly on each headline because there are so many that we need to touch this morning. Let's uh, uh, just begin with the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian newspaper, Tinubu Ruto call for financially autonomous African Union, reject fresh scramble for Africa. Let's begin with that one. What are your thoughts on that? Can Africa really stamp their feet and say, we do not want to fall for this scramble for Africa, the new scramble for Africa that is uh, going on now? China wants to take over, America wants to take over, UK wants to maintain the, their stand, and every, everybody wants to just divide Africa like they used to do in those days. Well, if my thought is simple. If they have to scramble right now because the Western world is aware of the deplorable states in Africa, and so they just want to seize the opportunity. If you look at the leadership, I call it the leadership uh, paraplegia. We are almost crippled. Our African leaders are at sea. They are not planning the morals of policies and procedures. They don't really know what to do. They don't know how to address the burning issues, problems that the African countries are facing. Sadly, we have what it takes to become world powers. We have, in terms of both human and uh, natural resources, we have them. But we don't know how to go about them. And even those that might know how to go about them fail to show you for egocentric reasons. The concept, look at the National Assembly, for example. I am highly pained that they will even conceive the idea of giving to each member about 200 and something million ostensibly as palliatives. I can't just search on it. I, I don't know. Oh my God. Mm. 220 million naira per member. That's palliative. We are talking of asphyxiating economy. Mm -hmm. And you're talking of buying bulletproof vehicles. Mm -hmm. How insensitive, how callous, how wicked can certain persons be? So, the Western world have come to a conclusion that these Africans are animals mm. that ought to be in the zoo and in, uh, ought to be controlled. And the best way is to push them into the zoo. And when you get these animals into the zoo, of course, the whole essence is to attract uh, 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 customers to that zoo and at the same time tame them, tame the animals, most importantly. Because that is what Africans have been. Look at Tanzania. I keep talking about Magufil, the former late president of Tanzania. That was how the word Magufilization was coined. Who led a Spartan life? <coughs> how many convoys? Tinibu is still having his matter at the tribunal. And look at the number of cars. The poor man, those at the bottom of the second order, can hardly see. Yet you're driving SUVs, you're buying new ones, you're fueling them. They came up with some reasonable reason that uh, the ministers all of them came out to work. It wasn't in the good government. Do you have to ask them to come out and welcome you? To what end? Of what, what is important? So you find that we have this wide perception of leadership and life. Look at Thomas Sankara. Look at Jerry Rollins. When are we going to learn? The, the ministers, the, okay, yes, the ministers came out of their own volition. Who buys the, the advisors and these other ones? Who buys the petrol? Is it not from the government force? Who's going to maintain the petrol? You remember when a Diagbo was the number two man, when a Diagbo was the leader of this country, because Buhari, it's obvious, was never in charge. Once it is 233, they find you in any government vehicle, you are arrested. Mm -hmm. Because as far as he was concerned, 
it was being fueled by the government and at the same time being maintained by the government. Because Accountability. Even when you bought fuel, you were refunded. Well, it's still there. talking on this we're issue, responding. yeah. Let, let's since we, we're talking about this, let's still on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. <coughs> Serap urges National Assembly to drop plan for 110 billion naira bulletproof cars. Others. Okay, Serap, because you know <laughs> it's yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. connected now. Serap urges yeah, National yeah. Assembly to drop plan. For 110 billion naira bulletproof cars and others, you know you've touched on this uh, palliative for, for 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 the National Assembly, and and here we have Serap saying they should drop the plan for you know that they have to buy these bulletproof vehicles. That's what I'm saying because it, it, it is rationally inexplicable. Nigerians are dying. First of all, I want to ask this question. You know, is a status thing. Bulletproof vehicle for national for what? Exactly. Who wants to kill you? Who? When they were if contesting you Nigerians, won, if yeah. You actually won yeah. Your election, yeah. If, if you actually won that election, which means you were accepted and voted for by your constituents. Thank you. Somebody who wants to kill you will not come from another constituency. What's his business? Unless you are having a business transaction with him. So, because most that assembly members are criminals, I know you tell me you don't say that on air, I'll say it on air because a senator said it who was a member of that assembly, but our passenger said it. And when he was, when they were asked to apologize, they said, go reel out names. Hmm. And that was the end of it. We all had the Aquabius matter of the mic. Is enough. We all had the book of showers case. So, most of them are criminals, I can say that for the people. They stole the bandits. But then, what do I do with a bulletproof vehicle? Exactly. What do you need a bulletproof vehicle for? Status thing. So they are there for themselves and not for their constituents. Then you now give your constituents 8,000 naira per month. Mm. The whole thing is ideated to fleece the treasury drive. We are aware of the Sharpie, what happened with the Sharpie, school feeding program, and so on. Even when the schools were, the students were at home, they were still feeding students in school. <laughs> they just, so you know that the, the Western world has come to the conclusion, realization that, look, these people don't even know what they are doing. Okay, uh, let's, let's look at a, another issue uh, in Punabo. And most times, yeah, let me, the let's same look. A man who is talking. No, sorry, one minute. The same man who is saying we will not allow that was the same man who went to shut down house. And, you know, like the election, they said, don't get involved. But they gave us money. The Western world gave us money. Mm. Put your mouth where your money is. Mm. If I give you money, why would I question how you spend the money? During elections, you run down there and invoke their system. Mm -hmm. Then when they come to criticize, analyze your election, don't get involved. You're not solving Mm -hmm. But you came to my nation to address. How many foreign ministers or presidents have come to Nigeria to address this election? Why do you always go to London and America to address them and invite them to monitor and everything? And they give you money, you collect the money. Exactly. You pay the paper, the case, the case. Then you say we're not beggars. We're not this. We need then that. Then you say we're not beggars. Okay. It's, 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 it's amazing, you know. I, I don't know. I don't know. People with intellectual arrhythmia leaving us. People who we were, we were, we were just of nullification and interposition. One minute you're saying one thing, the next minute you're telling me the next thing. Open about, we, were, I, I we were just talking, we were just talking before we came on, or before you came on, how uh, a revolution that we may not be able to handle may be brewing, and we're just begging that the people who need to hear this should hear this and not throw it in our faces, whatever they're doing, to tell us that we cannot, we, can, we have no say in whatever is happening. But now, the APC chairman has resigned. They, they keep quoting the resignation, like, you know, resigned, uh, in quote. Now, some people say it was a no, long time coming. Some people say there's anxiety. 
Yes. So what what is that? What is your take on the resignation? Please, uh, at this yes, at this point now, I don't give a hoot about who resigned. Thank you. He is part of the problem. In fact, we want that to see more of them system. resign. I resign. We want to see more of them as resign. As a, as a special advisor. So what is so special about resignation? When I wasn't comfortable, I resigned as a special advisor. So what is so special about it? It's 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 a big deal because in this country, resignation is a taboo. Mm. You have to be subservient. And when you resign, people will rape abuses. It's so vile of infection on you. Why won't you endure? Can't you see how much you are making from that system and all those stuff? So, what you are done, there's no pity. And that you resign does not necessarily mean the man in office, your principal, is bad or good. It simply means there is conflict of interest. What he's doing, I don't like. Or what I'm doing, he doesn't like. There is that relationship is getting cuddled, and you say you go. I always tell you, it does not necessarily mean what the person is because you cannot sit there and say you are the best. No. So, but the point I'm trying to make is I don't give a hoot about who resigns. Your resignation will not make the economy better or worse. Your resignation is your personal view. Your personal view. I don't care. I don't know how personal that, that was because some people are even saying that he was forced. Some are even saying he was forced to resign. <laughs> he has nothing to offer. The man himself is arrogant and egotistic. I don't, I'm not a member of APC, I'm not a member of APC. But the truth about it is he arrogates to himself the powers he never had. <laughs> That's the truth about it. He wants to dictate who bought in Lawa. Who was, who was, who was, who was in Lawa? Who, who lost, and, and, and who never contested that was given this to that ticket? Is it such a, is it such a man resigns and I give you a about it? These are the people that destroyed our economy. Let him go and rest. Let him go and sleep. Talking so about the economy. About the of, uh, talking about, about the economy. economy. That concerns, that yeah. concerns me. That's what I'm saying. The economy that concerns me are not who resigns. Yeah. If talking you know, about the economy. If you say Tinubu resigns today, I'll be happy because he's in charge of our economy. Then we can discuss it. But if you say Shatima, we have to some extent because they're sitting vice president. When you come to tell my minister has resigned, what's my bloody business? <laughs> <laughs> you come to tell me this. Why, 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 why? Let's talk about the economy. Let's go back to the economy. The lead headline APC of the internal politics is APC internal politics. Yeah. The lead headline of the Guardian newspaper leads with decongestion Lagos ports. Cash crunch, investors' apathy, stall $8.5 billion deep sea port project. Now this is tangential. We are looking at the whole economy now. Mm. You, you cannot divorce one from the other. Mm. Now they, they say there is apathy. Why would there be apathy when you have a wobbling economy, almost stagnant, if not in fact uh, retrogression? So there will be apathy. And most importantly, we live in a country where you don't even have the rule of law, so the investors are not even sure that their investments are going to be secure. And if, if there is any infraction, that definitely you have a law court that will render justice and not judgment. That is one. Then, secondly, when you look at the Nigerian economy, is the, uh, the Nigerian state, the volatility of the Nigerian state is so unstable. Are we talking about an era? You know, the country is dollarized. We have a, and you say you're talking about sovereignty. The country has rents today in dollars, everything in dollars. Let me just Because one key component, ingredient of something is your is your, is your, is your currency. So where is your something? Everything is assembled. Mm. That apathy definitely will be there. The lethargy will get it's a natural thing. Even as you are now, you will not invest in anything that you are not quite sure. When you consider all the different advisement, all the indices. I am not too sure of who you can invest. Or the oil companies are all divested. Hmm. Well, now. So it, it's a natural thing. There is a, you don't need rocket science. You don't need God to interpret it. You don't need God to do that. You know, we just talk because we have to talk. But unfortunately, all we've been saying have been following on death years. Not that they don't know what to do. Do they? Do they, they open up? They, yeah, they do. No, they do. 
I must tell you, they know what to do. So why are they, they doing the otherwise? The inertia, is, the inertia is there because the country is seen as a punk cat state. And that is where the revolution will come with. They will come, will come from. Look at the NSAS. These things just happen. They are not planned. They are spontaneous. And this will be bloody. Now I was telling somebody, I said, there is bewildering frustration and corroding bitterness in the land. Our hopes have been dashed, dreams shattered, and promise of a brighter future should break. We are headed slowly but steadily for a rendezvous at Canada. And this is as a result of the leadership, the cataclysmic leadership we have in this. Leadership that is quite insensitive. Leadership that doesn't wonder about those at the bottom of the second order. They all fall off. Okay. I will practice capitalism for the poor and socialism for the rich in this country. Okay, if so open up. Opunabo, we, like I said earlier, we should be very brief about anything that we're treating. And there's so many things that we might miss today. Uh, because, God, yeah, no, 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 I know, I know the passion with which you're talking right now. But a, a report, now that we're, we're talking about these things, we know that the government is promising us palliatives <laughs> that will come. But we've just had a report uh, that um, about 43 million people, 43 million Nigerians were shot out of Buhari's cash transfer. That's the report that has just come in. It's on, the, uh, on page 21 of the Punch newspaper. 43 million were shot out of the cash transfer. I don't know who were the people that got the cash transfer in the first place, and then 43 million the were shot out. That means 43 asked, million exactly. of, of qualified you people. The question. You just asked the question, 43 million, those are, those are cooked up figures. Just, they just want to give you an impression that certain they were beneficiary. Mention those who are actually benefited. Mm. They, they, they get, are you hearing me? Can you mm -hmm. hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. The 43 million they talked about is just to give you an impression that certain persons benefited. They should tell us those who benefited. Nobody benefited. Those things you are used to feather or line their pockets. They are not beneficiary. The only thing was a scam, a fraud. It was a positive thing. By the government. Look at the seven hundred something thousand or seven hundred twenty thousand. I forgot it. That was being handled by what's his name, uh, Francis Kiyama, who is an embodiment of contradiction himself. You kept quiet on the way you left office. You said uh, Minister for State Appointment is material to me. Such a character. <laughs> but you accepted it. Mm. But so the question is, let us know first. We, we must have the statistics. The targeted beneficiaries, let's say 100 million, and hypothesis right now, mm -hmm. let's say 100 million. And definitely for you to be a beneficiary, you do have your data, you have the particulars. To say, Oblavi Kotaira was a beneficiary. B was a beneficiary. Now, those who did not, who were left out, these are their particulars. Do we have that data? That you're going to get for children. It's like oil. If we lose that, we lose that. Who told you? We don't even know how, how many barrels we produce in the day. So you can't come and talk about taking hmm. These are just charlatan characters who are there to feed the children. Feeding school children that were not in school. Parents are feeding at home, we are forgetting the money. Hmm. So don't bother about this figure. They come up with this figure to give you an impression. That actually people benefited. That's just the one. Whereas nobody benefited. Give me the names now. Let me have the data. And let the person so because if you say I benefited and I did not benefit, I'll come on air to repeat it. Of course, I'll come up with the report. Let me have the data. Okay. Um we have this number of Nigerians and these are the ones that benefited. Then we now know even without telling us who we will really know by deductive reasoning that these other ones did not benefit. Then we can now start questioning why these other ones did not benefit if allocations were made for those ones. But none benefited. All right, Are let's. You forgotten the palliative, where when they read the minister's house, the senator's oh. house, and they said those no palliatives were meant to be shared on the dead. Let us, let us not have Open that. Open number, you're just, you're just opening no, up to. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's okay. I'm you know, this whole thing is that, that it's just these are facts. 
<laughs> these are facts. This, <laughs> unfortunately, these are facts. Open up, and they are so hard. It's so heartbreaking to hear these things. Heartbreaking. Go on every day, day, and nothing happens to them. Nothing when that thing happened during the end signs, people we are hungry. And someone holds free food that was given for you to share to the people. You hold it and say it's for your birth. You're waiting for your birthday. Don't you understand? Let me assemble members. I'm telling you, mark what they'll come up, their excuse will come up. They'll tell you for their constituents. Then, we, those that are supposed to get the 8,000 are just members of your constituents. How are you going to make the distinction? They'll go and say it's for their constituents. May God help this country. Amen. May God help this country. Amen. So still on point. I say, I say it negatively. Don't think I'm praying for the country. I say it negatively. <laughs> May God help it. <laughs> Not that I'm praying for the country. We need to pray for Nigeria, Funabo. <laughs> we need to God pray for Nigeria. <laughs> we, we don't need it in Nigeria anymore. We don't need it. All right. Above the mass head. We need to get and the rich will always oppress you to get to power. So we need a revolution. Let's take another thing on Prabhu. Let's take that. another headline. Let us see that. First, if we agree to remain at one, if we agree, then they have. The modern design is important. Let's take another headline of Prabhu. That we have like this. Mm. Let's take another headline. Uh, the, uh, on the, yeah, still on the Punch newspaper. FG withdraws mobile policemen and men from ex governors, ministers, VIPs. Uh, IG, I think. Please, can we be discussing most important issues? <laughs> we all know that this withdrawal is for the entire. The man wants money so that they will reach him, and after six months, they will return to their boss. Let us, let us address serious issues now, not the general public. When you know that it's just for three months, he wants money. It's a good tradition. The other three months, that he, for former government minister, who, who is he going to give you? Who is he going to give you? We all know what this is. This is the tradition. Then after three months, they will now use that the former governors and ministers again. Even just be a militant. Once you become a militant, you make so much money, they give you police escort. Decided left, right. Let us discuss issues and forget all these deceits by this kind of <laughs> How can we be discussing FD to just for uh, uh, You all know that three months, I'm at, three months from now, they will get that back to his name. He needs money. He just got into office. That's what he did. All the predecessors did it. Let him prove me wrong. Yeah. yeah, let okay. it be sustained. We are looking uh, for that. We are looking forward to that, that he can prove you wrong. Uh, but still talking yeah, about... And I'll be very glad if you yeah. prove me wrong. Still talking about I'll security. Still on security. Uh, during campaigns, yeah. they, the now uh, vice president said he will be in charge of security, even though that's very illegal. He will be in charge of security, and the president will be in charge of economy, uh, which also is almost like illegal because constitutionally it should be the other way around. Um, the president yeah. is the commander in, uh, in chief and the vice president is yeah. in charge of the economy. But right now we just heard from the vice chairman that the president is set to unveil security plan. You know, it is the, the um, that's on the nation's newspaper, it is the vice president that is telling us that the president will soon unveil the security plan and the president has not said anything about it. He has not talked about security. He has not talked about corruption, how he intends to fight it. Now we're only hearing it from Shetima. I don't know what your take is on that. Well, I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Because um, you don't vote for the vice president, party. It's a joint ticket. You vote for the president. And until there is a rebuttal from Mr. President, it is presumed that the vice president was outside speaking for Mr. President. It's information that has been disseminated to Nigeria. And maybe to a very large extent, assuage their fears, they still the fears of Nigeria. And also reassure them that um, the, the president or the presidency is, is not checking its responsibilities, it's, it knows what to do. And very soon, it will come up with a blueprint that will ensure the protection of lives and property, which of course, the principal, principal responsibility of any government. So probably he's just trying to reassure Nigerians on what the president, because uh, when he talks about, when he talks about security, it's just within the purview of Mr. President. Not the, the, president the concern, Mr. the concern of Punabo is that must we keep doing these things? You are campaigning to become president in a country like Nigeria that we know insecurity is a problem. 
and you are only now thinking about unveiling your blueprint, like you have said. Shouldn't these things have been done before even taking the reins See, of my leadership? Brother, my brother, you know, you know, you know the problem we are having in this country. Then. You people arrogate to this persons, give them so much. You, I don't know how you. Look, let me tell you, even the economic blueprint, they don't have. Okay, so most of these things are written down for them now by very intelligent persons. And unfortunately, they don't even understand what is written for them. They, they don't understand. That's why when people say manifest, I don't believe in manifest. Because you can get the best brain from Oxford, from Harvard. So put a, the issue is the man you are writing this manifesto doesn't even understand what the grammar to start with. Some don't come to a lot of food. For this school, I because a lot of food. Having different names, you have a nobody you don't realize a uh, schoolmates. How can you now understand what is written for that week? So when you start thinking that uh, uh, oh, this man he has promised me, my dear, they learn on the job. It is on the job. They get one they get but even Buhari himself confessed. Buhari told you he never knew the country was like this. Your former minister for education said he knew nothing about education under under Buhari. After seven years plus, Minister of Education. So mm -hmm. now you can appreciate why what happened in the, in the educational sector, the decay. He said he knew nothing about the grant, should not be blamed. But he was there for eight years. Is it a, 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 a that that the former governor who was in the that who was a Buhari, a Buhari, I don't even want to know his name anymore. You know? So when you think that these are persons that are actually there to work for you, you are making a big mistake. You are making a big mistake. They get there, it's for their pocket. So stop saying you ought to have prepared for this. None prepares for anything. They prepare to get into office. They are never prepared to lead you or he was out of the mountain of this step. None. I can tell you. Their focus is... Hey, Emileko, it is my turn as it is already the patrimony. Not to lead you. So when you start expecting so much, ah, my dear brother, you know, you, you begin to get worried. So don't expect, forget about he's supposed to have. He's supposed to have. He should have thought of. All through, before and during the election, all the thought of was how to win the election. Not how to lead the country. Not how to move us from the fatigue of despair to the buoyancy of hope. If that is what you think, then you have a lot coming. You're, you're sticking on the you're on a sticky wicket. I'm on, on a long <laughs> thing, according <laughs> to well, the bunch. Thank you, Punabo, for uh, your time and insight this morning you. on Off the Press. Yeah. Opunabo and Kotaria, political affairs analyst, has joined us from River Stakes on Off the Press. We'll be coming back in a moment to give you our first hot topic. Do stay with us.